Welcome back. So now we're going to talk about accelerators and late stage accelerators, but they're very similar. Okay. Now what is the difference fundamentally between the accelerator and the incubator? The first thing you've got to remember is that accelerators are for-profit ventures. They are normally associated with things like venture capital funds, and they may even be associated with um, certain tech corporations. Okay. But these are for-profit ventures. Incubators for the most part, I mean, I guess a corporate incubator, yeah, is a for-profit, but you know, ones associated with like a city or a university are not for-profit, right? So yes, an accelerator is probably gonna help you, but you've gotta remember, it's not being done altruistically, it's done because they're expecting to make a profit in some way, okay? So for the accelerator, unlike the incubator where you can kind of go in with like big ideas and you're still trying to figure out your opportunities, your, your minimum viable products, you know, this is like extremely late seed to the early startup phase, okay? In fact, as you're trying to get into an accelerator, really you need to be able to illustrate um, a minimum viable product, a clickable demo, something like that. Um, I actually think a lot of the pitches on Shark Tank are getting kind of close to the ones for what you'd expect in Excel. They actually have something that you can try, something that you can see, something you can touch, play with, experience, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you really need you really need to be kind of more to like the pre-startup, but definitely past the seed stage. Um, the purpose is to build that startup, right? So maybe you are kind of sort of just getting started and we're gonna grow that, or you've definitely got a product now we need to turn this into a brand new venture, right? So you're moving from idea to opportunity into the venture stage, okay? Specialization is gonna be vertical. So unlike the incubator where, you know, pretty much anybody with any kind of idea can come in, because a lot of the training for transitioning from idea to opportunity is pretty generic, you're gonna have a lot of technical expertise. So you might work in a tech accelerator, for example, and it might even be something even more specific than that, like, one might be for apps, and one might be for uh, social media, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of the mentors there are gonna be really super hyper-specialized, okay? The targets, okay. Now, there's exceptions, it's not always teams, but a lot of times because you are moving into the startup phase, you're expected to go there with your team, okay? Cohorts, also. So you and your team will be put into another batch of students in a cohort, and then you will go through your training that will last um, usually kind of a three to six month period. Now, a lot of the common mistake is that, oh, well, I'm just going to class to learn. I mean, yeah, you're learning and you're doing exercises and stuff. Yeah, that's cool, but you've got to remember the mentors that are teaching that class, they don't put it this way, but they're also interviewing. So like you don't want to be falling asleep at the wheel because they're observing you. They may be the ones that are going to be investing in your venture later on. You know, you are always on the job when you're taking these classes. Don't ever forget that for a moment. Um, I have heard stories that they will put students into these cohorts as a way to kind of examine how everybody's working together and get a feel for if um, that's somebody they want to work with or not. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so you're organized into cohorts, and so you take all of your classes and your training together, you know, over this three to six month period, and then it culminates in something called a demo day. And the demo day is like, oh, let's say it's an app, and you've got an app that, uh, obviously this is why I'm not in technology entrepreneurship, I'm drawing a blank on what would be a good app. Um, let's say you've got a brand new app for a special kind of uh, paper, um, you know, this pen is attached to maybe an, uh, something on a computer and you're writing on a piece of paper and then it goes into uh, like your tablet or something. I, I don't know. What, whatever it is you're developing, you know, that's the day when you've got that kind of finalized product, you, you've developed the venture and all you need is some funding and if only you can help me. At the demo day, you know, of course there'll be people from the accelerator there and then there'll also be invited investors. They'll be, they'll be there too. Okay? So hopefully somebody invests in your activity at the end. Okay? All right, um, entrance is open. In other words, hypothetically anyone can join. Hypothetically. Now you've got to remember, 
answer to today's accelerators is extremely competitive. Um, it's definitely less than 5%. In fact, some of the, the really good incubators like Y Combinator, for example, they have a lower acceptance rate than Harvard does. Okay, so yeah, technically anybody can go, but it's really tough getting in. And you know, one of the other pieces of advice I always give to entrepreneurs, don't be discouraged if you keep getting rejected over and over by accelerators. I mean, you know, it's, it's a very select number, a select few of a very good group to begin with. Okay, so yeah, maybe it's a 3% acceptance rate, but it's 3% of a very, very talented population. Okay, so don't get discouraged. Again, your goal is to boost growth. I've got this idea, but I can't launch this into a venture right now. I've got this opportunity, but I can't launch this into a venture right now. I need help growing. I need help taking it to the next level. That's your boosting. Um, training will be um, quite generic along the way. You know, you're going to learn to do things the accelerator's way, the way they want it done. So the expectation is you're going to be there. You're going to take everything. You, you know, I, there was one accelerator I worked for, and they had the same textbook that all the participants had to read. Um, I thought that was a little lame, quite frankly, because everyone had different, you know, ability levels, et cetera, et cetera. But it's going to be pretty generic, right? You're going to go through all the same training together. Your contribution um, is going to be uh, quite large. Um, you may have to pay up front to join uh, the activities of the accelerator, right? Um, you may have to pay for, some of them have campuses, you may have to pay to stay on a campus that they have set up for you. That's usually done at cost, but you may have a fee that you have to pay up front just to be admitted to the accelerator. Okay. It's usually at least 10 grand would be, would be, a, would be about a very low level of contribution. Compensation, how does the accelerator make its money? They're gonna make it through equity. So if you make it through the program and they decide to fund you, well, uh, some of them will, of course, up front take equity, whether whether you are, you know, whether you make it through the program or anything or not. And some of them will take even more equity if you're selected at the end. And of course, the venture capitalists that are coming there uh, for demo day will also be taking possibly a share of equity. Um, and this is something that you need to be aware of. Most accelerators have agreements that with the, it's it's what they call a non-dilutable share in equity. So, for example, I mean. If I were to draw on the board, hopefully this will help. Let's use some really easy numbers. Okay, let's say your firm is worth a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and so they agree that's the, the value of the firm. And so as you join the incubator, or excuse me, as you as you join the accelerator, they're going to give you um, ten thousand dollars for a ten percent share of the company. Well, that's pretty, make sure you guys can see me. Yeah, That's a pretty straightforward calculation, okay? Now, let's say as you're working through the accelerator, you, you get some venture capital coming up, and someone says, well, your firm has grown way beyond the original valuation of $100,000. Let's say the firm is now worth $500,000. And they're going to give you um, $50,000 for 10%. Okay, That's your new investment. Well, the problem is you've also got this original investor. Their share is non-dilutable. So the amount of money that they, um, the, the amount of investment that they have in the company is 10K, but it's actually 50K now for 10%. In other words, they have made $40,000 on their original $10,000 investment because it's a non-dilutable share. Okay. Now let's say your venture grows to $100,000. Or excuse me. thousand uh, um, a thousand a thousand or a million dollars okay and because your firm has grown and, and then you get an investor and they say great that original 10k for 10 percent well guess what that's now a hundred thousand dollars 
okay, that's the original investment, plus, you know, is this a dilutable share or not, the 50K for 10%, who knows? And then whatever, whatever else you, you have in there. And so what I'm trying to explain is it's almost like buying shares. When you buy a share, you buy a percentage, and it doesn't matter how much it grows, they can still take that. Now, sometimes there's an upper limit, so like maybe your, your firm gets like $10 million, and you know, they guarantee that their share in the company will never be more, worth more than a million dollars. You know, that, that can be an arrangement. But you gotta remember, you're selling your soul at a very early stage. Okay, so that's that's one of the things you gotta watch with this. Okay, um, advantages and disadvantages of an accelerator. Well, of course the advantage, just like an incubator, is they can contribute to economic and regional development. They can contribute to ecosystems of entrepreneurship. Um, that might not exist otherwise. It gives you as the entrepreneur a chance to grow a venture that might not even be possible without that funding. You know, for the most part, the training is really good. You'll get some really, really intense training. Um, and of course, that's the bad side to the intense training too. A lot of entrepreneurs like, they're like, yeah, I made an incubator. And then they get there and, and it's just like going into the meat grinder, right? Um, the other thing is, you know, because you have a firm deliverable at the end of the training period, i.e. the demo day where you're doing this pitch to investors, you spend a lot of time getting ready to do this pitch as opposed to doing actual work like meeting a customer demand or designing a product, right? A good equivalent, you, know, you think about the demo day as like a, a mega job interview. Well, you, know, you think about, think about if you're trying to get a new job, right? You'll spend hours and hours and hours of unpaid work doing job applications instead of actually doing something productive at your day job. It's the same kind of thing with this demo day. That's a huge disadvantage. Uh, another disadvantage, as I mentioned, this non-dilutable equity. Okay? So even though you grow, you know they still kind of own you just a little bit there. Now the bad part is, um, there's a few bad parts. One, it's so hard to get into them. Okay, that can be very discouraging, and a lot of opportunities I think are lost because of it. Now, the good side is if you actually get in because they're so selective, they think you actually have a reasonable chance of succeeding. Right? They don't just let somebody in to waste your time for three to six months because that's a waste of their money too. So they actually think you might be successful. So when they let you in, know that you know it's not guaranteed. In fact, nothing in entrepreneurship is guaranteed, but at least they think you have a good chance. Okay. Um, you know, being in a team, you know, you have to have a, a team assembled. That's that's a major obstacle. And of course, when you are all grouped together in a cohort, I mean, there's going to be a little bit of group thing, and that goes along with the, the same kind of basic training regimen that they they issue to everybody. So, you know, you may think a little bit differently than other people, or you may have some slightly different ideas that don't kind of jive. You have to remember, unlike what an inc what an incubator can offer, you know, the training is not all about you. It's about producing a good product. Um, that hopefully the accelerator can make money on, okay? Yeah, so I think those are some of the disadvantages. Um, and I've talked about the advantages already. So let's go ahead and look at these late stage accelerators. A late stage accelerator is just like an accelerator, but except it's for companies that are already in existence. Um, these are companies, think of it like as the corporate entrepreneurship accelerator. So you've got companies that maybe can't figure out where they need to grow next. They don't have a good feeling for their brand image. Um, or they've got this really cool idea, but they need some money in order to do that new idea. So they're, they're raising capital in exchange for equity. Um, so the level is definitely startup and after. Okay. Instead of growing a new venture, they're trying to make their new venture bigger. Okay. Vertical, again, just like in the regular accelerator, is specialized. You're going to meet one for tech or restaurants or logistics or software, etc. They're also going to be in teams. However, you know, with accelerators, it's almost like starting the school year. You know, like you're going to start your accelerator programming in September. It doesn't matter whether that's three months away and you need the help right now or not. Like that doesn't matter. You're going to start on their timeline. With late stage accelerators, it tends to be a little bit more. And I talk about this as tailored and customized. So you kind of go when you're ready and they're ready. It's like kind of a mutually agreed upon time frame. And the training is going to be very much tailored to specific problems that you have. You know, if you've already kind of got your venture going, there's no reason to go for like generic entrepreneurship training. That makes no sense. So it's going to really be focused on, um, you know, what are your specific problems? Okay, again, it's boosting growth. Again, the entrance is going to be pretty competitive, but 
you know, that's within the accelerator. Again, they'll have a training program dedicated to you for three to six months, give or take. Um, you got to pay a lot of money up front just to participate in the program, and once again, it's going to be um, some issues with you know this non-dilutable equity piece, probably. So let's talk a little bit more about this, right? So the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, again, a firm may not be able to grow anymore, and so this gives that opportunity. Again, the disadvantages are the same with the accelerator. And another disadvantage I forgot to mention with the accelerator, which is also one that we share with incubators, is related to the quality of the mentors, right? If you have bad mentors at an accelerator, incubator, or late stage accelerator, you know, this can really hurt your chances of success, okay? Um, there are accelerators out there that do not have good mentors or their mentors not really suitable towards the products that you're trying to launch. And so what you basically have done, you're wasting three to six months of time that could be de devoted to something else and you're giving up equity. Um, those are huge downsides. So I think that wraps up this portion of the lecture. Uh, in our next video, we're going to talk about crowdfunding. As always, if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up. That's a like. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. I've got some questions. Do any of you have experience with accelerators? Um, were they good experiences? Were they bad experiences? I'd like to know. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.